Brian Williams ventured over to Moscow to interview Edward Snowden. It's the first in-depth, in-person interview of the, uh, the NSA leaker, and the video has actually turned out pretty awesome. He defended what he did, his idea of what the, the purpose of journalism is, his idea of what patriotism really means in the modern day. And so we're going to play a few of the clips of that video. Uh, let's, uh, let's start with the first one. You have done, quote, significant and irreversible damage to the nation. He said there is, quote, concrete proof that terrorist groups and others are taking action and making changes, and it's going to make our job tougher. And this amounts to telling our enemy our playbook. So what's interesting is that we see the exact same language, the exact same accusations uh, being leveled against whistleblowers, being labeled against any critic of any government program. Uh, throughout history, throughout time. Daniel Ellsberg got the exact same language leveled against him by the Nixon administration. They said it was going to cause grave damage, that it was irreversible harm, that our national security had been harmed, that he was going to put American lives at risk. But we've had so many years, decades, since Daniel Ellsberg's uh, Pentagon Papers were revealed, and yet none of that came to pass. So they apparently have concrete proof that he has uh, irreversibly harmed American interests. Unfortunately, the only way we're going to see that concrete proof is if another person like Edward Snowden leaks it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the only way we're going to get the government documents. Um, so I think that that was a, I mean, when we watched this before the, the show, you were nodding along with him. Um, we early on made the comparison with Ellsberg, and I think he makes a very good point there. People say, but uh, people, the critics of, Dan, of, of Snowden will say, hey, stay in the United States. Say Daniel Ellsberg didn't run. He didn't leave. Okay, uh, good point. Uh, the other thing is uh, they didn't torture. Back then we weren't torturing people like we do now. So they tortured uh, Bradley Manning, Chelsea Manning. So maybe that would be a disincentive for you to stay here to be tortured. We also mm -hmm. tortured Jose Padilla, by the way. So uh, they tortured Bradley Manning for a year. Okay, so maybe that's why you don't want to stay. And plus, he, uh, Daniel Ellsberg, by the way, calls Edward Snowden a hero and said that it, he was right to leave the country. So that ends that criticism yeah. of Edward Snowden. That should end it. It won't end it. People will keep bringing this up, but it should end it. It won't. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that criticism, uh, I think we're going to address that a little bit later in the video, right? But mm -hmm. um, to uh, Snowden's the original point here about how this is the same exact language throughout history is spot on because this, that's, he's right. Uh, every single time you do something that the government does not like, the government s claims that you are hurting the nation. You are threatening the lives of our beautiful children. And if they die, their blood is on your hands because you did something we did not like as a government. And it's the same tired nonsense every single time. And, um, and, and the problem is that there is no transparency here, none whatsoever. There was no transparency on this program. They didn't tell us what's, what's going on. And again, they don't tell us what that concrete and irreversible harm that he's yeah. done to our country is. They won't even define it vaguely. Like, I'm not saying you have to show, like, this agent was killed on this day because mm -hmm. of what you did. But they can't, they, they don't even vaguely allude to, oh, this cell suddenly became quiet after the revelations. They, they don't even make up something. It would be simple enough to make something up, but they don't even go to that effort. They never, um, they, but they'll never also, they never couple that with, well, he's made us less safe, but... He did stop the government doing all that unconstitutional legal shit. So, yeah. hey, yeah. Hey, 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 they never he, say that. He at least raised the possibility they would stop it. Unfortunately, yeah. uh, at least so far in the debate over possible reforms in Congress, they don't seem willing to make any significant changes. Do you know, do you know what makes us less safe? Spending $6 billion in a no-bid contract for Booz Allen Hamilton to continue data, data mining uh, and not spending that money more efficiently elsewhere. That makes us yeah. less safe. Uh, having us drop drones indiscriminately in other parts of the world and killing people who are not guilty of any crimes yeah. other than having the wrong cell phone perhaps uh, and killing hundreds and hundreds of our, uh, um, civilians, that makes us less safe. Yeah. And uh, you know, blaming all of this on Edward Snowden as if he is the one who is bringing about these problems, if, if any problems happen, they're going to be laid at his feet, that makes us less safe because we're not we're not smartly and, and judiciously and intelligently addressing real problems mm. that we have. Uh, we've been talking about sort of some of the history of the things that America has done to generate uh, opposition to our policies, to generate new terrorists. He talked specifically about how the U.S. has used uh, sort of the memory and legacy of 9-11 
Let's go to that clip. I take the threat of terrorism seriously, uh, and I think we all do. And I think it's really disingenuous for, for the government to invoke uh, and sort of scandalize our memories, to sort of exploit the, the national trauma that we all suffered together and worked so hard to come through to justify programs that have never been shown to keep us safe but cost us liberties and freedoms that we don't need to give up and our Constitution says we should not give up. Yeah. I will say this, he is one articulate man. Yeah. He is, that was excellent. Yeah. Coward, mean, coward, <laughs> traitor, <laughs> traitor, coward, yeah. traitor, bad, bad person. I mean, I have to imagine he spent a lot of his time in Moscow sort of thinking this through. He probably did that for several months in advance of stealing the documents and leaking them. But yeah, he, he's done his, his history work, he's done his research. Um, and I, I think that when you look at what he says, when you think about what he says, and you compare it to the attacks, which we're going to show shortly, coming from pe people like Peter King, people like John Boehner, I mean, it's hard not to be on his side. Now, uh, one of the most common criticisms of him is that he went to Russia because he wants to work for Vladimir Putin. He wants to help him invade Ukraine or something like that. Um, he talks specifically about the accusations about him colluding with uh, the Putin regime in this clip. So I have no relationship with the Russian government at all. I'm, I've never met uh, the Russian president. Um, I'm not supported by the Russian government. I'm not taking money from the Russian government. I'm not a spy. Uh, and he goes on to say why he ended up there in the first place in this clip. Do you see yourself as a patriot? I do. You know, I, I think patriot is a word that's that's thrown around so much that it can be devalued nowadays. But being a patriot doesn't mean prioritizing service to government above all else. Being a patriot means knowing when to protect your country, knowing when to protect your constitution, knowing when to protect your countrymen from the, the violations of in, and encroachments of adversaries and those adversaries don't have to be foreign countries. So again, obviously he's been doing a lot of thinking, a lot of philosophizing about sort of the, the purpose of patriotism. We're in America, we're used to just, you know what a patriot is? It's an overweight guy tromping around the woods of Michigan with an assault rifle. Like that's what a patriot is. No, it's someone who's willing to sacrifice his relationships, his livelihood, even where he lives and, and flee to a place where he doesn't know anyone, he doesn't belong there, but he was willing to do it because he thought that that's what he needed to do to keep America safe. That's a, what a patriot is. Yes, because America, the United States, is really an idea, mm -hmm. right? The idea is liberty, freedom, and that's what he's really committed to and our constitution. That's the idea that America is that he's more committed to than certainly Barack Obama is or John Kerry or the rest of the people we're going to see in a second. I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, first, I don't like the words patriot and, and traitor and these jingoistic terms because they're mm -hmm. so self-serving. And, and um, I don't believe that, a, that any person is necessarily a patriot <coughs> or a, a traitor, that they may act patriotically one day and be unpatriotic the next day. So I have yeah. a much more complex look at a view of that. But the idea that America is an idea, not a place, is absolutely correct, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, America is not about the amber waves of grain, the purple mountains. Um, it's about the idea that it's a nation of laws, not of men, that it's uh, equality under the law, and that we have certain rights um, that are, are sacred. And it doesn't matter if, if we live where we currently live today. It's not America anymore if those rights are, are yeah. extinguished. Yeah. Yes. And, it, and preserving those rights, uh, you know, at your own self-peril, uh, is, I guess, the most patriotic thing you can do. Yeah, yeah and we, we hear a lot of talk, at least from certain corners of the country, about people's rights and how much they want to protect them. But they never seem to be the most important rights, like our actual privacy rights, our rights to have an election that means something, our, ri our right for our voice to mean something politically. It's always just the guns. Like, that's the only thing. The, the thing that they say is supposed to protect all of the other rights, at the end of the day, seems to be the only thing they care about protecting at all. Um, but okay, so 
Let, let's go ahead. Uh, we've got uh, Stone talking about uh, why it is that he handed over all the documents. There's been accusations that he was retaining some information either to hand it over to the Russian government or to potentially blackmail the U.S. government with. Reality is today I hold no documents at all. I, I didn't want to risk bringing them through Russia. Now, I could have held on to that and tried to use it to, to threaten the government. I could have used it to try to sell it or enrich myself. But that would have gone against everything that I was trying to do. So the question was, what do I do with it at that point? And the solution that I came up with was to destroy it, to take it out of my hands and entrust it fully to the institutions of the press. The best way to make sure that, for example, the Russians can't break my fingers and, and compromise information or, or hit me with a bag of money until I give them something was not to have it at all. Now, I, I do have to say, I don't know if I fully believe what he says about what's happened in his time in Russia. Not because I think that he secretly is some sort of Russian sympathizer who wanted to help them out. But once you're there, I mean, the idea that he's never spoken with Vladimir Putin, I find hard to believe. The idea that the, the Russian government has been so benevolent that they haven't tried to put any pressure on him, they haven't tried to get any information out of him, I find that very hard to believe. And look, obviously, it's a lot easier to protect the information if you destroy it, but you still know what you read, you know quite a bit. As he said in that interview, he's, he's worked for the NSA abroad, the DIA, the CIA. Like, he knows quite a bit. They could still get plenty of information from him if they wanted to. So I think the idea that he has been completely insulated from any contact with the Russian government, that seems questionable. Agreed. And that goes to my prior point that I don't like to view people as patriots or traitors. Mm -hmm. uh, you can be both. Uh, so, you know, disclosing all this information to the U.S., that was patriotic. He may have done traitorous things once, you know, once he got there. I have no idea. He may or he may not have. Hopefully he didn't. But it doesn't, that's why I don't like to, you know, throw people into these buckets of, oh, this guy's a saint, mm -hmm. uh, a, a patriot who's done nothing wrong, versus this guy's a, you know, a demonic traitor who is evil. I mean, people are complicated. And, mm -hmm. you know, if he's living in Russia right now uh, under their protection so that we can't just go and grab him, chances are they're going to get something out of him. Mm -hmm. What could that be? I don't know. Yeah. Like probably something. Yeah, well, and at the end of the day, it also might be worth what we learned from the leaks that he provided. But it is weird in America how we automatically assume that certain actions protect America. If you use military force, who cares about the details? You are protecting American interests. When that could not be more untrue, not only are you not necessarily protecting American interests, but you might very well be doing far more damage than simply no action whatsoever. I mean, our wars in Iraq and Afghanistan have undeniably created a new generation of terrorists in countries around the globe, not even just the countries we invaded. But the, 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 the changing views on American power and its application abroad has certainly created terrorists throughout that region. And yet, we put Bush on TV to show off the paintings he's made of world leaders, and Edward Snowden is hiding in Moscow. Agreed. And, and, and further to that point, you know, it makes me sick that someone like Dick Cheney and his buddies over at Halliburton got so insanely yes. rich off of these wars. Mm -hmm. And someone like Donald Rumsfeld, that smug son of a bitch, uh, is you know, strutting around you know, at fancy institutions teaching other people yeah. what a, you know, how brilliant, brilliant he is, while someone like Edward Snowden has to basically you know, be in exile for, for the rest of his life mm -hmm. and not enjoy you know, all that's great here in America. So that's, that's terrible. And, you know, when I see those, uh, those neocons on television speaking as if they have any authority on anything remotely related to foreign policy, and again, pushing for more wars that benefit their cronies uh, financially, very handsomely, it just makes me sick. I mean, yeah. why do we even have these people on television? You know what, we should say, look, you were 100% wrong about everything you said about the Iraq war, so just shut up and go home.